Uh, Mr. Bergman. What, hey, I'm Mr. Sam. What are you doing, and who are these people? Oh, I don't know. Um, oh, hi, guys. Um, yeah, we're teaching a class on uh, juggling. No, no, actually about podcasting. I didn't know you could juggle. I know. Well, I'm a man of many talents. I can't. You know why I've got oranges, Mr. Sam's? What? I know. I was going to ask you why in the world you, know you have oranges. You're talking about atoms. Oh, uh, yeah, obviously is why you then have oranges. Well, oranges are you know, they're spheres, and atoms are spherical, right? I Ish. Well, they're kind of like a sphere, aren't okay, they? Okay, kind of. But you know, the question today is how many atoms fit in an orange? Oh. So I think we're going to talk about that and learn about the size of an atom. All right. So let's do that. Sounds good. Okay. Hey, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty good at the juggling. I, know, huh? I, think, I think you've got a future in the circus. Yeah, well, yeah, I learned it while I was a lifeguard. A lifeguard? You had nothing better to do. We had nothing being better to do while being lifeguards. It was mm. in rain. What? And where was that? In Oregon. Note to self: Don't swim in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the the point of the oranges, of course, we're gonna learn about the atom and how small the atom is. So. Yeah. So, so why oranges and atoms? I don't get it. Because well, they're spherical. Oh. So you'll see. Okay. I think you'll, you'll find me. it as, as you learn. Okay, right. cool. Hey, uh, before we do that, we need to learn about the history of the Yes, Iran. history lessons in science. Why would you learn history? I thought it was just uh, like well, a history we got to know how we know what we know. I agree. How we got there. Yeah, that's important. So yeah. we're going to start with this guy right here. His name is John Dalton. John Dalton, British scientist. Yeah. Came up with something called Dalton's Atomic Theory. And he had kind of four parts to his Yeah, there theory. was kind of this big gap. Um, there was a... Uh, ancient Greek uh, Democritus, Democritus, I believe was his yeah. name, mm -hmm. and uh, he came up with the idea of the atom, and then Aristotle went, <laughs> and everybody liked Aristotle better, and so they kind of went with what Aristotle thought about mm. the existence of tiny matter, and so the idea of the atom kind of got squished for a couple thousand years, and then Dalton yeah. kind of resurrected it back in the 1800s. Johnny came back about 1850, I think it was, I and he remember. said, you know what, uh, atoms are small. Yeah. Notice they are tiny particles, yep. and he said, um, and he said elements. Yeah. So we talked about elements. Smallest <laughs> bit of an of an element he would say would be an atom and that's the smallest part so he kind of envisioned his atoms as tiny spheres yeah. you know some are bigger than others you know maybe this is the hydrogen atom and then a larger one might be uh, you know a, sodium a sodium atom okay yes <laughs> <N> <laughs> not s that's, yeah okay second thing he said is that they are all identical right so all of the same element right all copper atoms would be the same as all other copper atoms and it turns out he was actually wrong about that that is not exactly true. That's true. And he was actually wrong about the first one, too. He said they were tiny and indivisible. Yes, he? and we've actually figured out that they contain parts. Yeah. And yeah, we'll get to there. Yeah. And um, atoms of each element were different from one another. They are. correct and that was that. true. Yeah. So, so a copper whole atom idea. is different than a sodium atom, which is different than a neon atom and so on. Yeah. So you kind of get the idea. And um, he says that they can make compounds. Yep. And we talk about compounds in unit one. Compounds, of course, and we have two or more elements combined. So, yep. for example, CH4 is methane gas, and that's where the carbon combines with the hydrogen. But, of course, they're spherical, so he'd kind of envision it something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's, that's kind of his deal. But what we do know at the atom is uh -huh. that they are... Small. Small. How small are atoms, Mr. Sands? Very small. Well, let me help you by looking at an orange. Okay. So, Mr. Sam, you remember the orange? I remember the orange. Yeah, so the orange. How many atoms are in an orange? Um, at least five. I think you're probably right about that, but I think it's a lot more than okay. five. Okay. You see, there's a lot of atoms in the orange. In order to kind of envision this, you have to take the orange and you have to blow up to the size of um, well, the Earth. Okay. So, like, think of an Earth. And now the atoms and are... Earth. And Earth. The, the Earth. Earth. Okay. <laughs> um, atoms would then be the size of cherries. Wow, that's a lot of atoms. So envision the orange blown up to the size of the world, and the atoms are cherries. That's how many atoms are in the orange. Wow. Wow. All right, so there's my Earth-sized orange right there, and the whole thing is filled with actual sized cherries. That is a ton. That's so many stinking it's cherries. Unbelievable. I can't even really get my head around how many that it is. It is so unbelievable. So you yeah. take the orange, you blow it up to the size of the world. Yep. <laughs> and then you cherries. fill it with cherries. The earth filled with cherries. Wow. Right. That's so amazing. That's, that's... All right, so I'm going to take those cherries, and I'm, and I'm going to fill up the earth with the cherries. Yeah. Well, wow, that's a big, like big, big funnel. That's a big funnel, yeah. <laughs> well, the idea was the cherries kind of go through the funnel and fill right. the earth. Yeah. It's, so that, that's just gazillions of cherries. Unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So that, and there's that many... 
That's just that's it's crazy that that many atoms in an orange. I know. Wow. It's it's crazy. Okay. But that is that's the way it is. They're tiny. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're tiny. Well, I I believe you. Hey, as we go a little further in history, we meet a guy named J.J. Thompson. Uh huh. Yeah, J.J. Um, early 1900s. Yes. And he uh, did a really cool experiment. And so why don't we watch that experiment right now? Okay. Okay. Mr. Sam, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Boy, you can actually bend light with a magnet. Yeah. Yeah, you put That's, the magnet up there and it bends that beam of electrons. But so. It, and so what had he discovered? He discovered that there were electrons, yeah. negatively charged particles. So that what that did is it took Dalton's theory of atoms as being the smallest particle and said, well, there's something smaller than the atom. There's something yeah. in that atom that's negatively charged. So here's a, a picture. So guys, as you're watching this, make sure that you're copying down the, the pictures of the atoms. Yeah. You may need to pause the video as you do that. Yep. But here's kind of, he called his model the plum, plum pudding, pudding model. model. But since we live in America, we don't know what plum pudding is. Yeah. So I like to call this the chocolate chip cookie dough model. I agree. I agree. Chocolate chip cookie dough. Yeah. So it's spherical chocolate chocolate chip cookie dough. Yeah. Spherical chocolate chip cookies. And um, the chocolate chips, of course, have a negative charge. Those are the negatively charged chocolate chips and a positively charged cookie dough. Yep, the cookie dough has a positive charge. So the whole thing itself has a positive yeah. charge. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, was so ha that was his model. He said there are these negatively charged things living in this kind of cloud of positiveness. And, of course, as we added the energy to that cathode ray tube, what was shooting out were the electrons. The electrons, right. And then they were attracted to the magnet, as we saw. Yeah. Okay. And then we get to another guy, Rutherford, Ernest Rutherford. Rutherford. Yeah. He was 1915, I want to say, roughly. And he also did a very cool experiment. What did he do, Mr. Sam? Uh, he did the gold foil experiment. Mm -hmm. So what he did is he took this radioactive source and he fired what are called alpha particles through the piece of gold foil. And those alpha particles, it's essentially a helium nucleus. It has two protons and two electrons. So it has a decent amount of mass in it. And he fired them through this piece of gold foil. And he said, all right, if Thompson is right, then all my gold... Uh, or I'm sorry, all my alpha particles are going to go flying right through the gold foil. They're just going to go straight through because Thompson said it's mostly empty space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what happened is some of these things got bent. They didn't all go straight through. They kind of got deflected a little bit, and some of them bounced completely off. And he said, whoa, that's interesting. You know what his quote was? Hmm. He says, it, it was as if I shot a cannonball at a piece of tissue paper, and it came back at me. Yes. He was very shocked. Yeah. And then he said at the atom, he says, this tells me something amazing. About right. The atom. He said there has to be something very dense and positively charged in that atom somewhere that these alpha particles are bouncing off. So what did he discover? He discovered the nucleus. Yeah. He said instead of having a cloud of positive cookie dough, if you will, all the positive charge is compressed in the middle of the atom. That's right. And um, it bounced off. Now this right. picture shows us kind of how big that nucleus would yeah. be, right? Well, no, that's not a real good representation of the mm. size of the nucleus. So the nucleus is kind of small. It's really small. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, let's, let's, uh, let's actually let's uh, let's let's illustrate this with a little clip. What yeah, let's think? go out to the football field. Yeah, let's go to a football field here at Woodland Park and see if that